So let's begin by just taking a look at some very basic, very simple rational functions and get a sense of how they visually look. Because what I want to have happen is like with the polynomial stuff, with like quadratics and cubics and stuff, when someone just says to you a very simple rational function, it would be great if in your mind you had just even a very rough visual sense of what's going on, what it looks like. So let's just start off with the very, very basic people, and then we'll build from there. The first person I want to look at is the following. f of x equals 1 over x. So notice that really is a rational function because I've got a polynomial, a very simple one, namely the polynomial 1, it's constant, divided by a simple polynomial, just x. OK, so what does that look like? Well, we can make a little chart and have sort of x and f of x and plot some points. So let's put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I plug in negative 2, I just take the reciprocal, so I see negative a half. If I plug in negative 1, I just see negative 1. If I plug in 0, that's undefined. In fact, 0 is not a point in the domain. So in fact, this is undefined, not allowed. If I plug in 1, I get 1. If I plug in 2, I get a half. So if I plot this, what would this look like? Well, I have negative 2. comma, negative a half, so that would come in way over here. And then I have negative 1, comma, negative 1, so that's sort of over here. So you can see it sort of looks like this. And then I, I can't cross that line, but I have 1, 1, and then I have 2, a half. And if you think about it, if I put bigger and bigger x values in, those reciprocals will get smaller and smaller. Like if I put in 1,000, I'll have 1 over 1,000. If I put in a million, I'll have 1 over a million. So as I go further out, this curve is going to get closer and closer to the line y equals 0. So we have a graph that looks like this. And that's sort of a standard looking rational function. You can see it. It has as its vertical asymptote the x-axis. I'm sorry, the y-axis, and as its horizontal asymptote, the x-axis, and just hugs up against both those things. That is the standard 1 over x function. So when I say 1 over x, you should have a picture that looks just like that. Just got it from plotting a few points. OK, let's try another example. Oh, in fact, let me just write this here on this one first. How about f of x equals 1 over x squared? Let's put another more exotic polynomial down there. Let's see what that would look like. Well, if we plot some points, we still see that 0 is not a good thing to plot in there. So let's avoid the 0 point. But I'll put in negative 2, I'll put in negative 1, I'll put in 1, and I'll put in 2. If I put in negative 2 here, I see 1 over negative 2 squared, which is a fourth. If I put a negative 1 and square it downstairs, I still get 1. 1 is 1, and 2 is a fourth. So now what does this look like? Well, now what I see is the following. I'll put on my axes here first. At negative 2, I'm at a quarter. So at negative 2, I'm really low. At negative 1, I'm at 1. So now I'm seem to be climbing a little bit. And then we know we don't cross that line because, of course, I can't have x equals 0 anywhere. But then at 1, I'm at 1. And at 2, I'm at a quarter. So what I see is I'm going to be heading up to this. And again, as I put bigger and bigger values in, whether they're negative or positive, I'm going to be getting smaller and smaller positive numbers. So what I see is this kind of function. It has a vertical asymptote. That's the y-axis and a horizontal asymptote that's the x-axis. But it's different than the one we just saw because this one has both of its wings on the top because I'm squaring. I can never have a negative y value because since I'm squaring, those values will always be positive. So in fact, it's sort of this picture flipped up. But also the square means it's a little bit sharper. It's a little teeny bit sharper function. Anyway, that's what this looks like. OK, let's try another one. How about? The f negative of the first one. So let's let f of x 
equal negative 1 over x. What would that look like? Well, if you think about it, it would be exactly this picture, but all the negative values would become positive, and all the positive values would become negative. You could make a little table of them, but see that, in fact, we just would get this picture flipped over the x-axis. And so what we'd see here would just look like this. We get the exact same picture, but what used to be negative will now be positive, and what used to be positive will now be negative. So it's the exact same picture as before, but just flip-flop the roles. So that's the same function, just flipped over the x-axis. Okay, neat. All right, how about this one? Uh, what color should I use now? I'll use green. How about f of x equals 1 over x plus 1? Well, now if we just remember the shifting and the translating thing that we talked about a while back, we can actually see, instead of just plotting points, that this is going to be the same thing as this, but I'm changing the y values. I'm adding 1. So remember, if you add to y, go high. So this is just going to raise everything up one unit. So I should just take this picture right here and just shift it up one unit. And so if I do that, I think what I'd see is this. Let's try this right now. The exact same picture as this, but just move everything up, including the asymptote. So that asymptote is going to be now at 1. Let's see how that's going to play out. So let's take this. And now, what I see here is at 1, we have this asymptote. And we have the exact same function as we saw before. And notice, by the way, that um, if I set this equal to 0 and solve this, I see it crosses the x-axis now at negative 1. So it's literally the exact same picture as what we had before, but I just moved the whole thing up one unit, and you can see that it actually looks like that. I just took the whole picture and slid it up one. So this piece went to there, and this piece went to there, and this line, the asymptote, went up one unit. So it's just a shift up one. And I thought I'd try one last one with you guys, just for fun. How about this? I'll use the same color. How about f of x equals 1 over x minus 3. Well, now I'm shifting the x's, and so I'm going to shift either to the right or to the left. And how does that work again? Well, this is a classic mistake, classic mistake number 8 on my top 10 list. Number 8, the shifting function mistake. And remember, add to y, go high. Add to x, go west. So since I'm subtracting, I should go east. So that means I should be moving in this direction three units. Another way of thinking about that is asking where would this line go? This is where things are undefined. Where are things undefined here? When x equals 3. So instead of going here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So I'm shifting everything over to the east by three units. And if you graph that, what you would see is the following. 1, 2, 3 units. And there's the vertical asymptote. And this picture just looks like this, and then looks like this. So again, exact same picture as this, but I just shifted now to the right by three units, because that's what this thing tells me to do. So in fact, you can see that a lot of these, in fact, for example, this, this, and this, these three just follow immediately from the first one by using the shifting techniques we talked about earlier. And this one, if you plot some points, you actually see you get something sort of interesting. You get this function where both wings are sort of up. In fact, that's the, one of the ones I showed just a moment ago here, another version of that there. Anyway, those are some very basic type of rational functions where I hope when you see those things, you can get a sense as to how things are moving, whether it's like this or like this or shifted or up or down or around, sideways, so forth get a sense of basic rational functions.